another adventure with me and all my friends. I was captured and then adopted by the Shawnee Indians. I let them think I wanted to be one of them while I made secret plans to escape. Finally, after living as an Indian for four months, I sneaked away, but they quickly learned I was gone and sent out many braves to kill me. They know I know their secret war plans. So you see, I must hurry back to Boonesboro. The fort needs repairing and, and reinforcements. We'd sure like to go and help out, Mr. Boone. I can bring my fire extinguisher in case the Indians shoot fire arrows. Hey, you speak for yourself. I don't want to be scalped by a tomahawk. <laughs> don't worry. The Indians treat their ponies well. You're both welcome. Let's be off now. It can't be. I'm seeing a ghost. Hello, John. Is that you, Daniel? Suffering tarnation. Where you been? We thought the engines had got you. We haven't much time to strengthen the fort. A war party of 500 Shawnees is on its way here to attack Boonesboro. With only 30 men with guns. Defending our fort is hopeless, unless we can trick the engines into thinking we have many more men. I want the boys and women all to wear men's hats and shirts. When I signal, everyone will show his head over the top of the wall. Uh, Mr. Boone, I have an idea how to make one person look like three to the Indians. How's this, Mr. Boone? That'll keep the Indians guessing for sure. Dano! The Shawnees are here! Gumby, will you close the gate? Let's give the engines something to think about before they start an attack. everybody raise your heads and the dummy heads give the engines just a peek Mighty quiet out there, Tom. You think they'll attack? If them hats didn't fool them, they'll attack. Tom, tell Daniel there's an Indian with a flag of truce. Daniel, there's an Indian out there with a white flag. That's their signal for wanting to powwow. That means we fooled them. Which means we don't get scalped. Which means you don't have to fight if you know the right trick to peace. Here 
here comes another adventure with me and all my friends. Viscosity? What are you making? I need to make a thread filament stronger than steel for a net to catch the missile bird with. There's a big reward for whoever catches it alive. Well, now, how is your experiment coming along, Gumby? It just won't gel, Professor. <laughs> I see you need my help. Well, let me see now. Just a few drops of this acid should do it. The beauty of science is when you make a mistake, you know it. <laughs> mistake? That was a catastrophe. Is the missile bird worth it? Tom, look! It's the missile bird! Gosh, so that's what it looks like. The whole Army and Air Force are trying to catch it. Oh my, those birds are a nuisance. Range, one zero, plus two, plus zero six, out, down, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lift off and right on course, sir. General, are you confident this rocket will help you capture the missile bird? Oh, yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, when this rocket gets in range, it sprays a powerful tranquilizing vapor that will put the missile bird to sleep. General, the rocket is changing course. It's heading back toward us. Well, now this can't be. We thoroughly tested it for reliability. The rocket is now spraying the sleeping gas and... Uh, and it, it, uh, no, 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 this can't be. I... Uh, I... a meeting of all the experts this afternoon to discuss ways of capturing that missile bird. Hold on, Pony. What do you want? Uh, I just wanted to see the general about rescuing my friend Gumby. Do you have a pass? Uh, no, but, but uh, I... Can't beat it. This place is restricted. It sure is. Now, gentlemen, let's hear your ideas on how to capture this missile bird. Ah, General. Uh, uh, first, we get the exact longitude and latitude and the exact altitude for the, as uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the circumference and... Yes, a great idea. Here he comes. idea was this? Mine. Look, the decoy worked. Oh, 
Holy Toledo. Here's another Gumby adventure. Once upon a time, there was a fierce bad dragon who made his reputation by capturing princesses and frightening them to death. When he breathed, flames would come out of his mouth, and that scared everyone else, too. So the king announced that he was going to choose a knight for the singular honor of slaying the dragon. <laughs> hey, we got our own dragon. And he's jet propelled. Help! Hey, he's not going to be safe in there. We better go help. Come on, Pokey. Wait for me. This is no place for a girl. <laughs> the castle, look, a dragon. A fierce bad dragon is in the castle. Everybody run. Yeah, that means me, I guess. I'd better get out of here. And which of my brave knights assembled here will go forward to go on the dangerous mission? Ah, oh, your highness, I am the boldest of them all, and I will slay the fierce bad dragon. Gumby, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we'd better make sure that fierce bad dragon isn't prickled. I never have any excitement. I guess I'm going to have some excitement now. Yeah, what a tender morsel. Yeah. Oh, dear. I'd better hide in here till I can figure out how to get back home. Uh-oh, if I sneeze, they'll find me for sure. An explosion! Flames! Ha-ha! I am so brave! I have found the dragon's hiding place already! You're pretty small to be so fierce, but I've got you now! Uh, don't, don't hurt me! I surrender! If I didn't know better, I'd think that was goo. Come on, Pokey. Scream all you want, my dear. Nothing oh. can save you now. Oh. We'll save you, Goo. Careful, Gumby. That tickles, Sam. I do believe you're throwing things at me. Now we've got you. You can't scare us with your mouth stuck shut. Goo, you captured the dragon. Well, she couldn't have done it without us. There is a dragon, your highness. My, that is a very fierce dragon. I didn't know we had two. I told you, sire, that I'm not fierce. I just have a little cold. Be quiet. You may be small, but you are very vicious. Sir Black Knight, release our little friend and lead the real dragon to the kitchen, where his fire may help cook our food. <laughs> yes, Your Majesty. And who had better do some homework on what dragons look like? <laughs> <laughs> ah, shoot. If that's a little cold, I'd hate to be around when he gets a bad one. Here comes more fun with Gumby and Pals.
I'm worried. Gumby has never been this late before. Listen, I hear a plane. It's Gumby. He's in trouble. Prickle, bring the fire extinguisher, quick. Oh, I can't watch this. to have his day, I suppose. I'm in no shape to fight for a while. So it's up to you, Lieutenant Prickle. I want you to go after the Black Baron. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. One Black Baron coming up. Hey, go. Get off of there. What do you think you're doing? Where you go, I go. I want to get in on some of the action. Well, don't blame me if you get hurt, then. I guess the Black Baron is afraid to show himself for a fair fight. <laughs> well, it looks as though I scared him off. <laughs> Did you see that? Go, go. Where are you? I'm right behind you, Prickle. What are you doing back there? Oh, I can see better here. For freeing the skies of the Black Baron, I give you this Medal of Honor. Holy Toledo, here's another Gumby adventure. Well, Gumby, uh, the powerful essence of my formula for raising hair is now in this bottle. <laughs> I know a lot of people will be happy to hear about this. Only one drop of this in a glass of water, and you will no longer be bald. Here is a drop for you, Gumby. Hey, great! Now I won't have to wear a hat! It's lunchtime, Gumby. Let's go for a bite. The coast is clear, Go. Come on. What do you want to do with that formula, Prickle? Of course, having hair of your own, you wouldn't understand. But we dinosaurs would like to get in on this hair bit, too. 
<laughs> you want hair? Oh, no. It's time you stop laughing at us have-nots where hair is concerned. Da-da-da-da, da, 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 my day has come. Hair, 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 just one drop and then da-da-da. Somebody scream. What happened? Two bandits just stole the formula. Oh, my life's work gone. Don't worry, Professor. We'll catch them. Prickle and Goo, follow me. There they go. Hey, they are shooting candy at us. This is getting ridiculous. All this for a bottle of hair formula. like hair-raising adventures. What a waste of formula on you mangy blockheads. We got most of the formula back, Professor. My friend Prickle is the only one of us without hair, and he wants to try your formula. I've never tried it on dinosaurs before, but let's make an experiment. <laughs> Here, drink this, Prickle. Thanks, Professor. My days as a hairless wonder are over. Cheers. But I like you as you are, without hair. <laughs> ha, Zig, I feel something growing. Hey, it's a horn, Professor. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Toledo, here's another Gumby adventure. Billy Tailsmith, tell me, what two states at one time had Russian settlements or forts? Alaska and California. Very good, Billy. The Russians had a fort in California that played a part in California history. Pokey, I'd like you to tell us the name of the fort and its location. Pokey, did you hear my question? Uh, no, ma'am. If you can't pay attention, I'll have you stay after school for a special assignment. <laughs> Are you all right, Pokey? These should help. There. I don't need any bandages. I guess I did something wrong. I'll have to try something different. Hi, Pokey. I got two ice cream cones for the price of one. Would you like one? Well, if you don't want it, thanks. Ah, uh, uh, golly, I almost forgot. I have to run an errand for Gumby right away. So long, Goo. Oh, Pokey! 
Kiki. Wee! Phew. I finally got rid of her. Oh, no. I gotta get away from that girl for good. feeling Pokey is trying to avoid me. Well, I'll show him he can't. Ah, freedom at last. Hello, Pokey? I'm hearing voices. I'm dreaming. I'm going out of my mind. Pokey? Won't you talk to me? Yay! Doc, I keep seeing this girl wherever I go, and I hear her voice, too. Hmm, let's see. Now cough a couple of times. <laughs> Is it serious, Doc? I'm afraid it is. In fact, what you have is incurable. But it's rarely fatal. Uh, nothing to be alarmed about. Just get plenty of sleep and exercise. <laughs> I'm trapped. This time, I won't let you run away. Help, help. Help, help, help. Here comes more fun with Gumby and Pals. It appears from here that the nomination convention has reached a deadlock. Wait. Now we'll switch you down to the floor of the convention hall to hear the delegate from California. Laddie is saying we need someone for president everyone trusts and loves. Laddie nominates international TV star Gumby. And it looks like it's unanimous. Yippee! I've always wanted to live in the White House. Oh, maybe I'll meet Abraham Lincoln. Maybe, if you go for ghosts. Man, I don't know a thing about being a president. As your advisor, campaign manager, and ghostwriter, I ask you to leave such details to me. Gumby, you just stay here, and I'll check out Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore? Yeah, the four top presidents of the country are carved in that mountain. I'll find out who they are. When I get back, I'll have the secrets to being a super president. Super president? I don't even want to be president. Now I'm going to need a secretary. Goo, can you take shorthand? No, but I can hold a microphone. Good, then let's go. <laughs> This is Mount Rushmore, Goo. Take down the names as I give them to you. Uh, let's see. There's George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt. Did you get that, Goo? George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Teddy Bear. Well, three out of four isn't bad, Goo. <laughs> There's a book about George Washington. Very observant of you, Goo. Ooh, it's cold and dark, and we're on an ice floe. This is no place to find a president of the United States. Wrong again, Goo. 
This is the Delaware River, and here comes George now, right on time. Uh, George Washington, sir, a friend of mine who's candidate for president needs to know your secret for being a good president. Oh, well, let me see. Well, there's our next man. Let's go, go. Uh, we're okay, sir. Are you, uh, are you Mr. Lincoln? Uh, all men are created equal and endowed by their maker with these inalienable rights, life, liberty, and, um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Jefferson. Uh, how about the pursuit of happiness? Excellent. The pursuit of happiness. I hope you're not a spy for King George III, because what I'm writing here is top secret. The king would shoot me if he found me writing this. Oh, no, sir. I'm a revolutionary just like you. I just want to ask you what you think is a presidential candidate's best weapon for winning. Um, a president should know that the pen is mightier than the sword or guns. <laughs> forgot this big stick. Hey, Prickle, what are all these things for? Well, the four best presidents in our history said you'd need these things to be president. Tell Gumby briefly what they said, Goo. George Washington, cross the river when the enemy least expects you. Abe Lincoln, People vote for me because I can split more rails. Thomas Jefferson, the pen is mightier than the sword or guns. And Teddy Roosevelt, walk softly and carry a big stick. To me, they look more like some props for some comedian in show business. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Toledo, here's another Gumby adventure. fire department. What can I do for you? Uh, my laboratory's on fire. Oh, please, do hurry. they hide the hydrants. There's one over across there. <laughs> Help! Hang on, folks. 
Okay. It somewhere back on the boulevard. Here! Use me instead! Okay, Professor Cap! Jump! Uh, my laboratory! Oh, save it! Oh, my! Oh, my! Sorry, Professor. We can't. Our equipment is all ruined. But wait, maybe I can do something. Who ah, smothered the fire? I suggest we change the name of our fire department from Gumby Fire Department to Goo Fire Department. Holy Toledo, here's another Gumby adventure. Stop, stop. 
quit while you're ahead. At least we've got the right shape. In fact, it might be interesting being this color for a while. What do you say, Pokey? Sure, why not? At least I'm not a square. <laughs> Here comes more fun with Gumby and Pals. Does uh, Mr. Prickle live here? Yes, I'm he. I'm delivering the first prize of the National Pet Contest to you. Here is your golden iguana. Wow, it's beautiful. Thank you. Take good care of him. He's a very rare specimen and extremely valuable. Well, folks, here's my prize. I won the National Pet Contest. Uh-oh. I bet it's hungry after that long ride. I'll go out and get some food. Prickle, let him out of the cage. Iguanas are harmless. He'd like the exercise. I wonder what we're going to feed him if he doesn't eat that. I didn't ask the man what a Mexican iguana eats. He probably eats Mexican jumping beans. <laughs> I have an idea. I'll call my friend Professor Cap. He seems to know everything. Hello, Professor Cap? Yes, we have a golden Mexican iguana, and we don't know what to feed it. Oh, yes. Very peculiar animal, very fidgety about its food. I know just the thing for it. He eats special Mexican herbs. I'll have a batch ready by the time you get here. Hello, boys. It's all ready. He really likes that stuff. Stop him. He'll get so big, we won't be able to keep him. Guess I put in one ingredient too many. Professor Cap, how long do you think it'll take? those thieves right away before they feed that food to the iguana. Finding those blockheads in this forest will be like finding a needle in a haystack. Well, all we really have to do is sit here and wait. Sit here and wait? And let them get away? Sure. I figured that they are going to feed the iguana some more of Professor Cap's pellets. Oh, 
I get you. And every pellet they feed the iguana, the bigger the iguana gets until they can't carry it any further. <laughs> top of that hill and wait. Holy iguana, look at that, Gumby. Well, that takes care of the blockheads. I have a job for Professor Cap. He'll have a wonderful time figuring how to make the iguana small again. Or we can have Pokey eat the food until he gets big enough to carry the iguana back to the zoo. <laughs> Here comes another adventure with me and all my friends. Here's your hot chocolate, fellas. Looks like a pesky Indian arrow to me. Here, Prickle. The pesky Indians are your responsibility. See what they want. Well, fellas, the contents of that message will all be on the screen in just 10 seconds. Oh, that's nothing but puffs of smoke. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Those are Indian smoke signals, Glue. We'll have to call Pokey in to interpret these signals. Glue? Will you buzz Pokey to come in right away, please? What's up? We need your help to interpret these Indian smoke signals. Sure, sure. Ah, let me see now. Three puffs, four puffs, big puff, small, two little puffs. Huh. I got it. The message is, help. We better get over to the pesky Indian reservation right away then. Something's wrong. Oh. We got your message, Chief. What's the problem? <laughs> Helicopter, come. Take our children away to school. We see them no more like Indians. Follow that helicopter, quick. Hop on, Chief. Here we go. We'll get your children back. That's the hideaway. No. That's school. those blockheads before they get outside of that school building.
Okay, go. This is your job. Go after them. Bring that helicopter back down, will you? Those blockheads know what it feels like to be an Indian. Maybe they won't want to be squares anymore. Here comes more fun with Gumby and Pals. Hey, Prickle, look, do you see what I see? Now's our chance, Prickle. Come on. How about that, Pokey? It's a magic flute, all right. There's no doubt about it. I have an idea. Let's go downtown with this. Come on, Prickle. Now, Prickle, watch this. What flavor do you like? I like peppermint. Okay, here you go. Say, let me have that flute a minute, Pokey. I want to try something. <laughs> hey, Prickle. We better beat it before that flute spell wears off. Uh-oh! Pokey and Prickle have my magic flute. I better get Gumby. They're sure to get in trouble. I wonder if we can make that airplane dance. Hey, look out! Oh no, that gorilla has our flute. Ridiculous. Help! Help! I think they've learned their lesson. <laughs> Take over, Goo. 
Roger. I have a feeling, Pokey, the party's over for us today. Not quite, Prickle. We have a leaf raking party coming up. And I'm calling the tune. Holy Toledo, here's another Gumby adventure. This must be the Gumby, Pokey, Prickle, and Goo Detective Agency. May I see the boss, please? Gumby, there is someone here to see you. Send him right in, Goo. You may go in, sir. I am Bill Waffle from the carnival. Well, Mr. Waffle, what brings you here? Uh, we have a mystery thief at the carnival who keeps stealing our first prize stuffed dogs. And nobody seems to be able to find out how this thief steals these prizes, so we come to you. Well, you came to the right place, sir. We have never failed to solve a mystery yet. I'll call in one of my best detectives. Please send in Prickle, will you, Goo? Right away, Gumby. <laughs> Mr. Waffle, this is Prickle, and he will be the man to work on your case. Those are the first prizes there, and they keep disappearing. Well, Mr. Waffle, you can go right ahead with your business and stop worrying. I'll stand guard and see what happens. Step right up, folks. Win a prize for only a quarter. Spin of the wheel when a beautiful stuffed door. Hey, it's gone. That thief is a real sharpie. I'm going to have to call Pokey in on this to help me. Right, Prickle. We'll send Pokey down immediately. Goo, please send in Pokey. Right away, Gumby. Did you call me, Gumby? Yes, Pokey. Prickle is in trouble. The thief got away again with another first prize. He needs you down there to help. Goo and I will be coming later. Well, if I got to work, there's no place I'd rather work than at a carnival. Here comes your lucky number. That thief would have to be a magician to take that dog now. Where'd you go? Wonder where they are. Hey, that looks like Pokey up there. Somebody get me down. Stop the Ferris wheel. Somebody's in trouble up there. To a seat, Pokey. We'll bring you down. Gumby, those are the thieves. Don't let them get away. Goo, 
fly up there and tie up those two fellas. Pokey, what are you doing up there? We'll never catch the thieves if you keep deserting your post. Prickle, those are the thieves. In deserting his post, Pokey caught them red-handed. Red pony, that is. <laughs> you might say I got carried away with my job. Here comes another adventure with our son Gumby and his friends. I'm so proud of our boy. Four hundred twenty nine. 430, 431. Well, that's it. Cadwallader, go see if our goose has laid another golden egg for us today. Yes, Your Highness. Thank you, Cadwallader. This makes 432. Oh dear, my goose is getting away. Cadwallader, you fool, you left the door open. <laughs> Without that goose, my kingdom will be poor. I'm ruined. Ungrateful goose. Cadwallader, search the kingdom until you find that goose. Yes, your highness. I beg your pardon. I misjudged the pond. It was too small for me to land on. I was so exhausted from flying all day, I had to come down for an emergency landing. Well, I can see we'll have to speak to the park manager about making that pond longer. Where are you flying from, Goose? I'm from the Kingdom of Rue, which is ruled by King Ut. Yeah, I remember that place. The king was a clown. Yes. And he had a witch cast a spell over me, so I could lay nothing but solid gold eggs. I flew away to find someone who could break the spell, so I can lay real eggs that hatch. Well, it just so happens I know the world's best spell breaker. Wonderful! This must be my lucky day! Oh dear, there's one of King Ot's soldiers come to take me back. What'll I do? Come on, follow me. So you see, Gumby, this ghost needs you to break the spell so she can lay real eggs again. Have her drink all of this. That should break the spell. In the name of the king, you are all under arrest for stealing the king's goose. Your goose, your highness. Well done, Cadwallader. Well done. Has she laid another egg yet? A solid gold egg? Yes, Your Highness. There's another egg. We've been tricked. That's not a gold egg. Oh, no. What shall I do now? I'll be poor as a peasant. Your Highness, you've overlooked something. 
What? I overlooked putting you in the dungeon for breaking the spell. But King Ot, sir, golden goslings are far more valuable than gold eggs. Far more valuable? <laughs> well, in that case, we're going to have a lot of goslings. And we'll have a feast for you prisoners. Hooray! 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 Here comes more fun with Gumby and Pals. I've never seen you buy so much food, Gumby. Sure. Thanksgiving is the biggest feast of the year in our house. Why is Thanksgiving such a blast? Because we have so much to be thankful for, Pookie. What, for instance? Are you all right, sir? Oh, where am I? The last I remember, I was standing on the deck of our ship. Then a giant wave hit me. Well, and knock you right out of the book. What ship were you on? The Mayflower. And I'm Brother John Harland. I'm glad to meet you. I'm Gumby, and this is Pokey. I must get back to the Mayflower. They'll need me. That must be your book. Come with me. I'll take you back. <laughs> You got the wrong chapter, Gumby. We're in the middle of the Atlantic. Sorry, let's duck out to the next chapter. Here, hang on to these ropes, Pokey. Come on over here, Sonny, and get a look at our ship's topside while I check to see how the rigging and masts are holding up. Lopsided is more like it. Gumby? Let's get out of this book. I don't see why anybody would want to ride the ocean on this tub of the Mayflower. Just follow me, my friends, and you'll see why. To dry land, I hope. Verily. Where are we? This is King James Castle, King James I. I'd like to meet King James. I've heard of him. I don't think you'll want to meet him after you see him in action. What does this carnival have to do with Thanksgiving, Gumby? If you could just be quiet a minute, you'll find out, Pokey. There's two of our men come to speak to King James for us Puritans. Listen. Your Highness. All we ask is that you permit us Puritans to meet, believe, and speak as we wish in our own meeting places, freely as they do in Scotland. <laughs> Those Scots get along with me as well as a lamb gets along with a wolf. My mother and I have been haunted in our dreams by Puritan goblins all our lives. I'll chase you out of the land. Your Highness, they're only asking for what everyone has a right to. Ha! Huh, the right to cause trouble, that's what they want. Guards, put that rebel and his friends in jail. Next time you want to change history, Gumby, do it when I'm not around. Besides, I can't see what this has to do with Thanksgiving. I know, Pokey. I talk too much. Well, my friends, I think you now see why we Puritans left England. Now, let's get back to the Mayflower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Now all I need is for William Tell to shoot his arrow. you to miss your landing at Plymouth Rock, because it's already written in all the history books. Captain, we've sighted land, sir. Gumby, I now see what we have to be thankful for at Thanksgiving. I'm glad you learned something, finally. What are you thankful for during Thanksgiving? I'm thankful I'm not a pilgrim. Oh, no! Here comes more fun with Gumby and Pals. Your mother sure makes terrific sandwiches, Gumby. What's in this one? Well, there's lettuce, cheese, ham, turkey, pickles, and tomatoes in this one. Hey, what are you doing there? Come on, Pokey, let's catch that thief. There he goes. I wouldn't have taken your food, but my family is starving. And my little sister cries night and day for something to eat. Say, we gotta find some food quick. Help, I'm sinking. Hey, it looks as if something was buried here. I'm going to find out. There's a large basket here. Here, give me a hand, pilgrim boy. It's corn, and it looks like at least another basket is buried with this one. The Indians must have put it here. Uh, I must tell my father. Boys, your discovery of this corn will save us all from starving. Maybe we can find some more buried corn. Come on. We got no corn, but plenty of water. I'm thirsty. <laughs> did, did, did you see what I see, Gumby? Yeah, Pokey. Quick, back to Plymouth. Well, let's go, Pokey. This is one time I don't need to be persuaded. Come on, this way. Hurry, this way. <laughs> Fellas, I somehow get the feeling we are surrounded. We better try talking with the Indians. First smart thing I've heard you say all day. You take corn of Indian. Indian no take your food. The people at Plymouth don't mean to steal. They were starving. Indian can starve too. We bury corn to save for planting next spring. We're sorry. We want to pay you for the corn. We take pony in trade for corn. This is ridiculous. I'm worth more than a couple baskets of corn. Or am I? Hey, now, 
now wait. You can't have Pokey. He's my pal. Captain Miles Standish, the Indians found out about the berry corn we took, and they made us give them Gumby's pal Pokey in payment. I don't think it's fair that Gumby pay for the corn we took. You're right, lad. We've got to get back Gumby's pony. Ugh. Now I know why the Indians say that. Start firing over their heads when I give the signal. Captain Standish of Plymouth. We come in peace. All we want is a pony. We'll trade for him. What will you give for pony? Three hunting knives and some glass beads. We trade. You take Pony, we take knives and beads. Hooray! Say, Gumby. Yeah? I feel sorry for those Indians. Why, Pokey? Well, I think they got cheated. How did they get cheated? Because I'm worth a lot more than those lousy knives and beads. <laughs> but, Pokey, the Indians don't think so. Huh. I take it back. I'm not sorry for them. I'm sore at them, thinking me so cheap. Holy Toledo, here's another Gumby adventure. Okay, Pokey, your turn. Here I come. Okay, good. Now turn. Turn quick! Turn, Pokey! Uh, this time, we must move with utmost secrecy and speed. Gumby, there's a creepy general in there planning something naughty. How do you know, Pokey? Because it's all so secret. Well, let's have a peek. I want you to take 800 picked troops across the water to Charleston, then up here to Lexington, then on to Concord. Capture the arms and gunpowder the American rebels have stored at Concord. At Lexington, arrest their leaders, John Hancock and Samuel Adams. You will move out tonight from Boston at 11 o'clock p.m. Nobody must have any warning of your movement. Is this clearly understood? Uh, yes, sir. Pokey, that's General Thomas Gage, commander of the British forces in Boston in 1775. We've got to tell Paul Revere about this, 
so he can warn the Minutemen. Colonel, did you hear someone speak? Yes, sir. Look there, sir. Spies. We must stop those spies before they can warn the rebels of our secret plans. Guards! How are we going to find Paul Revere with all those British soldiers looking for us? I don't know, Pokey, but I'll figure out something. Yikes! Let's beat it, Pokey! What if the soldiers see us? Don't worry. We can beat them to the book in that. Ready? Go! Now, Paul Revere, here we come! Yumbi, look! Wish we'd never heard of Lexington and Concord or Paul Revere. You don't seem very grateful for your liberties. I'm grateful to be alive. I think the coast is clear now, Pokey. Let's go see. General Gage's welcoming committee is back. Yeah, and there are more of them, too. I have it. I know how to take care of those soldiers. You wait here, Pokey. I'll be right back. Okay, Pokey. Stand back. Hey, Gumby. The soldiers will see you out there. It's okay, Pokey. The situation is well in hand now. I have a Groovy to help us. Gumby, look out. ready to be mailed back to King George III. <laughs> it's April 19, 1775 for them. It could be a late April Fool's joke on the king. <laughs> Come on, Pokey. We've not much time left to find Paul Revere. Looks like we're in the wrong place. This is just a silversmith shop. No, this is the right place, Pokey. Haven't you heard of Revere's silverware? Hello. Can I help you? Mr. Revere, we overheard General Gage order a detachment of 800 soldiers out on a secret mission. On a secret mission? That's right, sir. To capture John Hancock and Samuel Adams at Lexington. And also to take all the guns and gunpowder the Sons of Liberty have stored at Concord. We Sons of Liberty have been expecting something like this. We certainly appreciate your telling us this in time. 
In gratitude for what you have done, I give you this badge and make you a member of the Sons of Liberty. Now I must hurry. Goodbye, my friend. Come on, Son of Liberty. Let's get out of here before the war starts. I'd sort of like to hang around and see the fireworks. Not me. British cannonballs and I don't get along together. Goodbye. another adventure with me and all my friends. Read you loud and clear. Come in, Pokey. Over. Yummy, come here quick. There's a beat-up looking beatnik here pestering me for free food. <laughs> Well, I can't seem to make this pony understand is that I need food badly. Not only for me, but for my buddies at Valley Forge. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you hear what he said, Pokey? Of course I heard what he said. He's asking for a free handout. No, he said Valley Forge. This fellow is no beatnik. He's one of General George Washington's soldiers. Sergeant Farrington, the 2nd Battalion, 1st Regiment under General George Washington. General Washington, I have meals for all our men, thanks to our friend Gumby. Good work, Sergeant. Tonight, we cross the Delaware River and take Trenton. I wish I had up to the minute reports on what those 1,200 Hessians are doing while we are crossing the river. General Washington, I can help you with my walkie-talkie. A walkie-talkie? Yes, sir. You see, I can send my friend Pokey secretly to Trenton. There, he can instantly report back to me the situation by the shortwave radio set. That's wonderful magic if you can do it. Well, go ahead, but be extremely careful that the Hessians not find out anything about our secret operations. When you get to Trenton, radio me a report of what the Hessian soldiers are doing. How do I get to Trenton, anyway? Well... You cross over this river and go upstream six miles, and you're there. It's as simple as that. You mean I've got to cross over that? No, thanks. I'll wait till somebody builds a bridge. All you do is hop from one piece of ice to another until you get to the other side. General George Washington will be counting on you, Pokey. Let's get hopping. Well, I guess I can't let down the father of our country, can I? Just call me Little Eliza Pokey. So long. Uh, uh, maybe these two shepherds can tell me how far it is to Trenton. Uh, excuse me, sirs. C can you tell me the way to Trenton? Ah, Himmel! A talking horse! Jawohl! Colonel Raoul would be very amused, no? Colonel Raoul? Who's he? <laughs> Who is Colonel Raoul? Ho, 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 ho! You see, Hans, this pony really talks. Maybe he make you out like your mentor mascot. Yeah, and we get Wiener Schnitzel for supper. <laughs> now we go to Trenton and have a Christmas party. Yeah! <laughs> Boy, I really put my hoof in it this time. Well, here I go for the sake of dear Father George. Golly, General, sir. If I hadn't read my American history, I'd be afraid to cross the Delaware River with you tonight. General, your boat is ready and the troops are ready to embark. Good work, Lieutenant. Gumby, can you contact our spy? I'd like to be sure the Hessians don't know what we are doing. Gumby, calling Pokey. Come in, Pokey. Report now. Over. 
here? What is this? My new mascot? But it is only a pony. Ah, but Colonel, this pony really talks. Pookie, do you read me? Over. Yeah, Gumby, but... Pookie, General Washington wants a report on what the Hessians are doing now. Over. General Washington? Gumby, I can't talk to you now. I'll explain later. Over. <laughs> this is amazing. A talking horse and a talking box. Pookie! <laughs> what a funny horse! Washington's army in the middle of the Delaware River? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gumby, can't you understand? I can't talk now. Over. Pokey, before General Washington attacks Trenton early in the morning, he's got to know what the Hessian soldiers are doing so he can surprise them. Report to us. Over. <laughs> we'll be sleeping early in the morning. <laughs> Middle of the Delaware River? <laughs> That's the best one ever. I like this talking horse. <laughs> Come, let's all have some Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> Fellow Haitians, we have a remarkable mascot, a talking horse. Listen to this funny story <laughs> about yeah, General yeah. Fischer. Oh. <laughs> he could kill oh. you. <laughs> The same boys. <laughs> we sure took them by surprise. They didn't know a thing about our secret attack. They didn't, huh? Gumby, I think we better keep a British flag at our gumburger stand just in case. What do you mean, Pokey? General Washington won the battle. Yeah, but with our help, he may not be so lucky next time. <laughs> <laughs>